being a fast follower is, is a, often a smart choice. But given the, the dynamism that we're seeing and, and that we're likely to see in the, in the decade ahead, actually, um, it's a much smarter business choice to uh, be the innovator, be the pioneer and, uh, you know, develop some of these breakthroughs um, rather than being caught uh, off guard by them. That's a question that many of the businesses that I work with are wrestling with. Um, I think there's a lot of concern currently around greenwashing, and rightly so. Um, you know, particularly um, uh, well, well, with the reputational risks around it, but also with all of the regulation that we're seeing coming through, particularly from the EU. Um, and yeah, it's it's a big concern for businesses. Um, obviously, there's a lot of backlash as well in places like North America and, and the polit politicization of ESG. Um, so I think what we are seeing more and more is green where businesses are doing really good stuff around sustainability um, but are not communicating it or, or, or not uh, talking about it and that is an issue that is a problem because um, you know to, to make progress on these issues we need many many businesses all of the incumbents and all of the businesses across uh, key sectors to be taking action and to be being seen to be taking action and to sort of create that sense of momentum um, so talking about what you're doing, talking about your goals, talking about what you're achieving, sharing what you're learning is central to sort of creating the broader, more systemic impact that's needed. So we're real proponents at Forum for the Future of what we call green doing. So taking, you know, setting ambitious targets, uh, taking bold action and, and communicating the actions that you're taking and the ambitions that you're setting. Um, it's not always about only communicating what you've already done. Obviously, you need to have, um, it's good to have a track record and good to have a uh, substance behind what you're doing. But there is real power also in um, communicating your ambition for what you need, what you, what, 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 what you want to achieve, because in signaling that ambition, that will attract um, partners, collaborators, uh, and people that are, are want to be part of realizing that vision. Um, so we would really advocate the communication both of bold ambitions, but also of the actual tangible substance that sits behind that. Um, and it's also about engagement and being kind of authentic about sort of what you're struggling with. So we'd always say it's better to sort of aim high and uh, set a target based on what the world needs and engage, you know, make a really good effort to achieve that and engage authentically around that and communicate you know, if you are falling short, what you're struggling with, rather than, you know, setting a really low achievable target that isn't what's what's needed and easily achieving it, um, that, that isn't going to get us where we need to get to. The most pressing issues for any specific business will be as unique as the business themselves. Um, the sort of most relevant, most material issues will completely depend on the sector that you're in, what your business does. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's hard to sort of answer that question generically. Uh, obviously, though, um, there are some issues that are are really time critical. Um, climate in particular uh, uh, is is we know that we have a narrow window of opportunity um you know over the balance of this decade probably the next sort of five six years where we still have an opportunity to sort of mitigate the worst impacts of climate breakdown um you, we, we need 50 percent decarbonization you know by the end of this decade in order for that to really be be, be possible um so we need a massive transformation uh, across all sectors um and, and that, we, we also need that to happen rapidly to avoid some of the critical tipping points that um, that that we know we will cross if we don't take that action, um, so that that's an obvious one. But you know, when we look at what the, you know the, the rate of biodiversity loss, how you know particularly after the pandemic, how the numbers on inequality are kind of really going in the wrong direction in many places. Um, I think what what business leaders are facing is uh, is really a poly crisis. So multiple um, very sort of um, challenging contextual issues uh, that are all interrelated and compounding. So it's not like climate change is just an environmental issue. It's also clearly a, like a very big social issue with huge health implications. Um, and it's interconnected with, you know, nature and inequality and, um, you know, not addressing those interconnected issues 
will make every one of those issues worse as they compound. But then also positively, um, successfully addressing some of those issues and finding solutions that that solve for multiple issues simultaneously and taking smarter, more effective approaches to get, really get to the root causes of some of these challenges um, can have compounding benefits as well. So um, I, I think, um, you know, there's, there's many, many issues, but what's important is that you're approaching them in the right way with the right sense of urgency, um, but also understanding the interconnections and not trying to address issues in isolation. Um, and, and really what's needed for that is a new way of thinking and acting. And what we, what I see a lot with the, 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 the business leaders that are most successfully navigating this is uh, an understanding that the operating context that their businesses are facing are fundamentally different now than they were for the the relatively stable and benign operating context that most senior business leaders have enjoyed for most of their career. You know, we've seen in IKEA, um, they've moved away from uh, fixed sort of strategy roadmaps to just using scenario planning for their forward business planning because they recognise how volatile their you know, operating context is their their value chains, and therefore, you know, uh, the idea that you can map out what you're doing for the next um, eight quarters or you know, however long is is just a complete fallacy. That's it's it's a, it's it's made up. So um, they they've shifted to scenario planning for their business planning, and I think what what we're what we're increasingly seeing is um, enlightened business leaders understanding that and really making the very difficult choice of you know, facing into it and understanding that they need to think and act differently and embracing um, a, a kind of a, a new approach uh, to managing their businesses. I think one of the things that is is abundantly clear is that um, we have all of the technology that we need to tackle climate change. Uh, so initiatives like Project Drawdown really highlight how um, it's not that we, you know, just applying current technologies and existing technologies at scale will get us to a point where we're drawing down more carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases than we're emitting. Um, so it's not like there's you know, this huge conundrum around um, new technology that doesn't exist. So a lot of what's needed with technology is just deployment and mainstreaming and scaling. Um, so, uh, but that is no no small feat. So sort of the, the amount of infrastructure and uh, investment and business opportunity around that is absolutely massive. So, you know, when it comes to things like energy, uh, you know, in, in now renewable energy is typically, uh, you know, at, at a lower cost than, 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 than fossil fuels. Um, and sometimes also the technology is really, really old technology. So particularly when it comes to the agri agriculture sector, a lot of the regenerative agriculture techniques that many businesses are seeking to scale now are based on, um, you know, very very, very old forms of things like crop rotation and cover crops uh, that have been, you know, in indigenous knowledge or practiced by farmers um, for, 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 for really long periods of time. So it's, it's not always about the latest shiny new thing. Um, there are areas where technology is definitely needed, particularly around hard to abate sectors um, and areas like, uh, you know, flight, um, uh, things like green hydrogen and um, for, for sort of uh, steel production and, and other sort of heavy industries. Uh, so technology is definitely needed. Um, and we are seeing incredible breakthroughs, I think, particularly when it comes to um, some of the, uh, you know, types of protein. So uh, meat or dairy uh, protein that are very greenhouse gas intensive. Um, the breakthroughs that we're seeing around things like precision fermentation are absolutely incredible and will completely reshape an entire industries, you know, over the next five to 10 years. Um, so there definitely is a lot of disruption and um, some really promising um, technologies that are, are sort of on the cusp of kind of mainstreaming, um, we think. Um, but I think um, I think it's important also not to, yeah, to, to sort of be, be aware that actually we have so much technology already and it's, it's often just about scaling that. Um, one of the things that is really, um, exciting, I think, for business leaders is the the opportunity about uh, like a challenge like the climate crisis, the need for such rapid business transformation over the next five years and the huge um, the huge shifts that are needed. Um, we've seen, you know, I worked with Diageo, the, the leading uh, drinks business globally um, to set their 2030 strategy uh, back in 2019. And one of the things that they really leaned into was what we call the innovation gap. So rather than setting a target based on what you think, what you know you can deliver with current technology and current costs, setting a target based on what the world needs 
and then working to develop the, the breakthroughs and the innovations uh, uh, that can deliver that target at an affordable cost and at the pace that's needed. Um, and obviously you don't just do that and don't do anything. Um, uh, Diageo set up uh, Diageo Sustainable Solutions, so a open innovation platform where they set out the key challenges where they needed new technologies, where needed things to scale in order for uh, them to achieve their targets. And it's been incredibly successful. When we set the strategy, you know, they, we, they've talked about fully decarbonizing their operations by 2030 um, and, and a 50% decarbonization of their supply chain. Um, you know, that one of their biggest parts of their carbon footprint are glass, is glass bottle manufacturing as a premium drinks uh, supplier. It wasn't possible when we set the strategy to, you know, produce uh, um, uh, zero carbon glass bottles. It, that, that technology didn't exist. Now they are in the process of piloting a uh, glass manufacturing facility in the UK, partnering with a supplier uh, that will be uh, a net zero, uh, produce net zero glass bottles. Um, and if they hadn't set that innovation gap and hadn't had the kind of courage to do that, that breakthrough wouldn't have come through. So I think there's a huge opportunity for businesses to challenge themselves and really um, be aware that actually doing nothing is often, uh, uh, you know, in a more stable operating context, being a fast follower is, is a, often a smart choice. But given the, the dynamism that we're seeing and, and that we're likely to see in the, in the decade ahead, actually, um, it's a much smarter business choice to uh, be the innovator, be the pioneer and, uh, you know, develop some of these breakthroughs um, rather than being caught uh, off guard by them. I think the, the name of our my, my organisation, Form for the Future, uh, kind of alludes to um, the sort of futures perspective uh, and the bigger perspective, I suppose, that uh, I always try and bring into my talks. And I'd hope that an audience would leave with a kind of a sense of the bigger picture. I think particularly for people working in business, um, you're so focused on uh, quarterly sales targets and um, you know, you're know you often in the trenches. It's really helpful, I think, sometimes to have an external speaker who can come in and sort of bring in that sort of that, that broader perspective and, and enable you to sort of see that bigger picture and wake up to just how different things are likely to be in the next few years, let alone in the decade ahead. Um, the second thing that I think I'd, I'd really like to leave people with is lots and lots of expiring examples. So sometimes these big macro challenges can kind of feel overwhelming. So I think there's something about seeing the incredible stuff that's happening already and being inspired by how other businesses are tackling these challenges and really sort of specific, tangible examples that make it, make, make it feel like there's actionable stuff that can be done. Uh, which leads to the third point, which is around um, an audience leaving with a real sense of sort of hope and motivation. So a sense that, you know, there are some quite scary challenges ahead and um, it's not like I think we, we, we as a civilization are probably in for a bit of a bumpy ride. Uh, we know that um, uh, there's a certain amount of climate breakdown locked in now, but um, I think it's really important that people are leaving with a sense of motivation and hope and, and agency. Um, and I'd really want people to sort of uh, be, be, be leaving a talk kind of fired up to make stuff happen uh, rather than um, kind of feeling demotivated. So uh, seeing the bigger picture, having some really tangible, inspiring examples and feeling inspired, hopeful and motivated. Mm -hmm.